In the last section, we spoke at a very high level about the architecture of our application. In this section, we're going to start off by generating a brand new node project. We're going to ex install Express into it, and then we'll talk a little bit about the differences between Express and Node inside of our project. So let's get to it. Let's generate our project and install Express inside of it. I'm going to change on over to my command line. I'm going to make sure that I'm inside of a directory that is appropriate for housing this brand new project. So on your local machine, you might have like a workspace directory or a projects directory, just some location where you can put some new code. Inside of here, I'm going to create a new directory called server. I'm going to change into that directory. And then I'm going to use the npm command line tool to generate a brand new project. So I'm going to run the command npm init, like so. After running that command, I'm going to get asked a couple of different questions here. For right now, we don't really care about the responses to any of these. So I'm just going to use the default values by hitting enter, 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 and so on. OK, by running that npm init command, we generated a package.json file, which is used as kind of like the central hub of our project and is going to be used to define a lot of the different dependencies that our project is going to depend upon. The first dependency that we're going to install is Express. We will install Express, excuse me, Express by running the command npm install dash dash save Express, like so. Now, this should only take a second or two to install. After Installing Express, I can then look into my package.json file, and I will see Express reflected in, in there underneath the dependencies section. Now, just really quick, notice I use the cat command right here. This is only available on Mac OS and Linux-based systems. It is not available on Windows. So if you run cat package.json, you might see a little error. Now, this is probably the only time I'm going to ever use a platform-specific command. So if you are, are on Windows, don't worry. We're not going to do anything like this in the future. OK, so clearly Express is now installed. If you have a newer version, that is totally fine, absolutely OK. So we've now generated our project and installed Express inside of it. But I still want to talk a little bit about what the difference is between Express and Node and how we're going to be using each of them inside of our application. So the first thing I want to do is give you a very plain English definition of Node and a plain English definition of JavaScript. And then we're going to look at a different diagram that's going to communicate how the two of them work together. So first off, Node. This is a JavaScript runtime. It is used to execute code outside the browser. Traditionally, JavaScript code has always been executed inside of some web browser because that's where JavaScript first got, got its start. It was used to execute code inside the browser on websites to give them a little bit of a sense of interactivity or make them feel just a little bit more dynamic. Over time, people realized that they wanted to use JavaScript in other locations, as in outside the browser. And that is the source of the Node.js project. So Node is used simply to execute code outside the browser. In other words, in some arbitrary environment, like on my laptop or on your desktop or any other location you can think of. Now, Express, on the other hand, is a library that is using the Node.js runtime. So Express is not its standalone thing. You can imagine Express as being a little collection of functions or helpers for making working with the HTTP aspects of Node.js a little bit easier. So Express is really not its own standalone code base, per se, or its own runtime. It is a library that has a collection of helper methods to make writing servers just a little bit easier. Everything that you find inside of this Express library, we could, in theory, implement from scratch using just Node, like just writing plain JavaScript and using some code that is included with Node.js. So Express is just a helper thing. It's something that just makes our lives a little bit easier. OK, so that's Node and Express. And that's really important to understand the difference between the two, because the next diagram that we're going to look at is going to be a little bit crazy. OK, so this is kind of getting a little bit more towards uh, the caliber of diagrams in this course, I would say. We're going to have some pretty crazy diagrams, but don't worry. I'm going to do my best to always explain exactly what is going on with each of them. OK, so let's go through this again. Uh, or excuse me, let's go through this diagram. And we're going to be talking about some of what Express does and some of what Node does. 
So the first thing to understand is that when you are running some server on your local machine, your server is going to be listening for HTTP, HTTP traffic on a single individual port. You can think of a port as being like a little door through which traffic like HTTP requests can be routed. So we might have some incoming HTTP request being issued by say our browser also running on our local machine. And it might make a request or excuse me, that request might be coming into some very specific port on our machine. We are going to configure Node and Express to listen to traffic that is attempting to access a very specific port on our local machine. Now, Node.js specifically is going to be what is listening for traffic on that port and waits for some information to flow in through it. Node is then going to take that information that flows in from this incoming HTTP request and hand it off to the Express side of our application. So remember, we could do everything with Node. We don't need Express. Node is the real core aspect of what's going on here, and it is what actually handles all the underlying HTTP traffic. However, we want to use Express because it just makes our lives a little bit easier. So Node is going to take this incoming traffic. It's going to hand it off to Express. Express is then going to look at the request, and it's going to decide what little bit of logic inside of the Express application that we're building is going to handle or somehow respond to this incoming request. In Express, we write collections of what are called route handlers. Route handlers are used to handle HTTP requests that are asking for a very specific service. So we might have one route handler that is responsible for authenticating a user. We might have another route handler that is responsible for logging out a user. And we might have a third one that allows a user to create and save a new uh, survey or a new campaign. So again, Node is going to take the incoming traffic, route it to Express. Express will then figure out where to send that incoming request to. You and I are going to route these, write these route handlers that will process the incoming request and generate some outgoing response. Their response right here will then be sent back to the running Node process and Node will then respond to the incoming request with this response that we author. And so eventually, this object, what we refer to as res, which is short for response, will be sent back to whoever made that incoming HTTP request. OK, so that's kind of Node and Express in a nutshell. Again, the takeaways are that the underlying Node runtime is listening to this traffic on some very specific port. When some traffic comes in, it is then routed to the Express side of our application. You and I are going to route some amount of logic that handles incoming requests and formulates and sends out a response that gets routed back to whoever made the original request. OK, so that's great. Uh, that's enough for right now. Let's take a break. And in the next section, we'll talk a little bit about exactly how these route handlers are created inside of an Express application. And we'll also write our first route handler. So I'll see you in just a second.